Hello friends, today we will start with a new concept that is photo detector. In the year 2019, there was a question in JNTU paper, what is a photo detector? Explain the principle of photo detection in semiconductors. After going through today's video, you will be able to answer this question. So let us start with what is a photo detector. From the name, we can break this into two parts. This is photo and detector. So this means this device is detecting some photon and photon is nothing but the quantum packets of light energy, right? So this device can detect or sense any optical energy or electromagnetic radiations and convert that into electrical signal. So the definition of photo detector is photo detectors are devices which can detect or sense any optical energy or electromagnetic radiations and convert that into electrical signal. Nowadays all of you are using remote controls to switch on different electrical devices like your TV, AC etc. Let us discuss about that. So this is a remote control suppose and with the help of this remote control you are interested to switch on or switch off this electrical appliance. This may be a AC or TV whatever it may be. So this remote control is used to switch on or switch off or control the operation of this electrical appliance. What is happening in this case? There is a LED inside the remote control. Whenever we are pressing any button, these LEDs, they are radiating some electromagnetic radiations or light energy. So, these radiation are sent to the electrical appliance which you are interested to operate. So, when this photon is coming over here, inside this electrical appliance, photo detectors are there. So when this photon is coming from the remote to this electrical appliance, this will be detected by this photo detector and then that will be converted into electrical signal. So when it is converted into electrical signal, that will initiate the operation whatever you are interested for. Okay, so this is the simple example of use of a photo detector. As this is detecting or sensing the optical energy, this is also known as light detector or photo sensor because it is detecting light, hence it is known as light detector and as it is sensing the photons, it is also known as photo sensors. So in the not self, whatever device if it is detecting some photons, then that is known as a photo detector. This is the simple definition. Okay. So, if we are using any semiconductor to design that photo detector, then that is known as semiconductor photo detector. So, in your syllabus, we are having this semiconductor photo detector. So, what is semiconductor photo detector? A semiconductor photo detector is a semiconductor device which can detect or sense light and convert that light into electrical energy. Here the photo detector is made up of semiconductor. The working principle of semiconductor photo detector is internal photoelectric effect. Further the commonly used materials to fabricate semiconductor photo detectors are silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide and indium gallium arsenide. So these are most commonly used materials apart from these also other semiconductor materials can be used. The application of semiconductor photo detectors includes fiber optic communication system, process control, environmental sensing, safety and security, defense related applications and many 
more. Now the question which I have showed you in the first slide, let us discuss about that. It was asking about the photodetection mechanism of a semiconductor photodetector and here I have mentioned that the working principle of semiconductor photodetector is nothing but internal photoelectric effect. Now we will look into this in more detail. So the working principle is internal photoelectric effect right. Let me consider one intrinsic semiconductor over here and we know that for intrinsic semiconductor if we plot the band diagram there will be a valence band there this is the conduction band and there is a gap between this conduction and valence band that is known as barrier potential or energy gap and it is denoted as eg right now if i am incidenting some light on this intrinsic semiconductor what will happen so these are the photons i am incidenting on this intrinsic semiconductor when these photons are being incident on this semiconductor material they will be absorbed by the electrons and if the energy of this photon is more than this energy gap then what will happen those electron are now able to jump from this valence band to conduction band. So there will be transition of electrons from valence band to conduction band. So these are the electron hole pairs over here. So if these electrons are receiving photons of energy which is more than this energy gap then this electron they will move to the conduction band. When this electron is moving from valence band to conduction band, it is leaving behind an empty space which is known as hole. So this is a hole in the valence band and this electron has moved to the conduction band. Similarly, this second electron, if it receives a energy which is more than Eg, then it will also move from valence band to conduction band, leaving behind a hole in the valence band. Similarly, this third electron will move to conduction band leaving behind the hole. The process will continue if they are getting energies which is more than Eg, right? Now, we are having a number of electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. And these are known as charge carriers, right? So, these are the charge carriers. So, now we are having free electrons in the conduction bands and holes in the valence band. If we will incident more amount of photons then will be number of these carriers will increase and that will increase the conductivity of the material. So these free carriers they can lead to electrical current or voltage in the device. That means we are incidenting light energy in the form of photons and we are getting finally electrical energy. But what is the condition over here? The energy of the photon received by this electron should be greater than or equals to this energy gap Eg. So E should be greater than or equals to Eg. Further E can be written as H nu. So E is equals to H nu and that should be greater than or equals to Eg. Here H is the Planck's constant, nu is the frequency and we know the relation between frequency, wavelength and velocity is that nu is equals to V by lambda or here we are having photons and that are the quanta of light energy and hence the velocity of these photons is equals to the velocity of light. So nu can be written as C by lambda because nu is equals to V by lambda and here V is equals to the velocity of light. So Hc by lambda is greater than equals to Eg. Now from here I can write just by taking this lambda to this side and this Eg to this side I can write lambda should be less than equals to Hc by Eg because from here if I am taking lambda it will go there and this Eg will come to the denominator. Okay. 
so it is hc by eg and lambda is less than equals to hc by eg what is this lambda this is the wavelength of the incident light so the wavelength of the incident light should be less than equals to hc by eg where this eg is the energy gap of the semiconductor material h is planck's constant c is velocity of light depending on the material we are using we should decide what should be the wavelength of the incident light so that this phenomenon can initiate thus the wavelength of the incident light should be less than the value that corresponds to band gap energy of the material if we are taking easy then that is that corresponding wavelength is equals to hc by eg and the wavelength of the incident light should be less than or equals to this value thus we obtain that the wavelength of the incident light should be less than equals to hc by eg eg is the energy gap h is planck's constant and c is velocity of light so when light of suitable wavelength is incident on it electron hole pairs are created incident on it means here it is the semiconductor material so whenever light of suitable wavelength what is the meaning of this suitable wavelength means the wavelength should satisfy this condition okay so if we are incidenting such light on the semiconducting material then electron hole pairs are created when this electron hole pairs are created that leads to creation of free charge carriers and when we are having free charge carriers the conductivity increases so the conductivity increases due to creation of charge carriers now from here you can see the lambda should be less than or equals to hc by eg so what should be the maximum value of this lambda this cannot be greater than this value this should be either less than or equals to so maximum is that it should be equals to hc by eg so lambda maximum can be written as hc by eg so this is the largest wavelength that can induce electron transition electron transition means electron will move from valence band to conduction band because of which we will be getting electron hole pairs now if you substitute the value of this h and c then lambda maximum can be written as 1.24 by eg and this will be in micrometer when we are considering this eg in electron volt so if we are expressing the energy gap in terms of electron volt then by substituting that value here we can find out the value for lambda maximum so it is 1.24 by eg and the unit will be micrometer only when we are considering eg in terms of electron volt now we are having free charge carriers within the device and if we are applying some electric field then these charge carriers will start moving in a particular direction and if charge carriers are moving in a particular direction that will lead to flow of current so the application of electric field leads to flow of carriers and hence a current flows through the photo detector so this is the basic working principle of semiconductor photo detector so semiconductor photo detectors are of two types one is photo diode and the second groups comes under photo transistor according to your syllabus we will be concentrating on this photo diodes so what is a photo diode a photo diode is a semiconductor pn junction device which converts light into electrical signal so if you are giving some light energy that will be detected and converted into electrical signal further this photodiodes are also broadly classified into three types 
this is pn photodiode pin photodiode and avalanche photodiode so we'll be discussing this one by one and we'll also discuss about solar cells which are also special types of photo detectors today we'll stop here in the next class we'll be starting with pn photo diode thank you all if you like the content of the video please press the like button and share the link with your friends further please subscribe to my channel to get the notification whenever i am uploading a new video thank you all